as you ask around your teams or your the folks that you know, uh, find out the person that is the uh, the subject matter expert, if you will, in an application. In this in this case, in the requirement space, if, a really good example of this, uh, a local example, I suppose, is is finding finding the James Bond of requirements. Look for that individual who who can teach requirements, who can talk about requirements, who's been there, done that, and they've been in all kinds of situations, uh, both physical, emotional, and, and, and what have you, and, and learn from them. They'll also give you a good indication of how to work with different cultures within the organization, externally or internally. Um, and so, so that's, a, that's a good thing to think of in terms of mentoring programs. See if you can't mentor with that person, or even just a set of folks. Maybe there's a community of practice and requirements that you can talk with. In any event, Find that subject matter expert in the business, in IT, in enterprise architecture. At Dell, we have a, a mentoring site where we can learn more about how to mentor and how to be mentored. Uh, one of the things I want to keep in mind uh, in terms of soft skills and mentoring, I have a tendency of, of talking too much, which you're probably finding here. <laughs> be like a sponge. Listen. And, and really try to learn as much as you can from those folks because you'll never know when you get a, a good uh, piece of nugget of information that will help you be able to navigate the requirements world. Build trusting relationships and really try to learn how decisions, decisions are made in your organization and, and lean on your mentors. Some of my mentors um, at, the, at Dell that I've had are, are Michael O'Bray and um, Sherry, uh, Sherry Sheridan and the requirements engineering community of practice. Without these folks, it really would be impossible for me to even to do my work. And actually, believe it or not, I bleed requirements. I, I love the work. I love the space that I'm in. So let me talk for just a moment here. If you're new to an organization and you're just not able to connect to subject matter experts, that's fine. Connect to the people that are on your team. Find out from your dev manager, your, your dev individuals, your testers. Find out what jazzes them. Find out what they really like and, and see if you can't help them. And in time, what you'll find is you'll, you'll build a relationship there, and perhaps you'll be able to apply a requirements technique, a skill, or ability to help the team do what they're doing better. In the long run, as, as Joy mentioned, we're all here at the end of our day to, to develop good products. So in understanding what the team likes and enjoys, and if you can apply those type of requirements, um, goodness nuggets that you learn from your mentors or learn from other people, then that's great. In terms of soft skills, let's talk a little bit about culture. When, when you can't get a hold of somebody um, off-site in India or Brazil or in, in uh, Europe, Middle East or Asia or Africa, try telephone, try telegraph, try teleconference. But just before you go, schedule and schedule that call. Pause for a moment. Do you understand the culture of your colleagues in Brazil, in India, in Asia? If not, I highly recommend uh, finding cultural training. There's a, um, there's a company that we've used in the past and at Dell that we have to uh, learn about cultures. And so at Dell we have classes on world cultures about how to interact and how to follow, follow up with individuals. When it comes to soft skill trainings, there's the, the final area that we'll look at here is facilitating and conflict management. When it comes to negotiation and facilitating working sessions at Dell or even externally, I really try to keep in mind of the idea of get up, speak up, and shut up. My, my, my colleagues who are probably listening would say, ah, you could work on that, Anthony. There are classes held by the interpersonal group which have excellent sessions on working with conflict and negotiations. In fact, they have excellent classes on understanding world cultures as well. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to negotiating and facilitating or being a, um, a mediator for a team or a group, know thyself, know thy company, and know thy colleagues. To know thyself, know your strengths and weaknesses when you go into a situation. Don't put yourself in any event that might push your boundaries or not allow you to have the best requirement session possible. In terms of knowing that company, know how management makes its decisions and how they work through conflict. This will help in terms of, of uh, understanding the behavior and the nuances of the organization. When it comes to knowing thy colleagues, try to understand the points of view from, from your colleagues and from the individuals um, who you're help mentoring for. You know, we've looked a lot about the, the culture here, but Joy, maybe you have something else to say around the mentoring area? Yeah, I do. So let, let's be frank, Anthony. You and I have been doing requirements for a while, and I think we will very quickly admit requirement skills are hard skills to learn, particularly if you're sending somebody to a class and expecting them to come back and apply those skills just perfectly. 
Uh, we think the best way to learn these skills is, is certainly to put the students in a course where they can get the, get the language to understand what we're talking about, but then really you need to put them in a situation where they can practice the skills that they're learning. So mentoring programs are a really good way to accelerate the adoption of these new techniques. Um, this is going to stack your deck for the best chances of success. So find people in your organization who are great at requirements and have them mentor across the organization. These people should work with many teams so they can create consistency organization-wide. Um, ideally, you would want to find people that are globally located, uh, but if not, you need to have your key resources be willing to travel around and mentor projects around the world. We have an example here at C-Level where we use some mentoring to grow a junior resource. A few years ago, we hired someone who was right out of college with no real software skills. He was a smart guy. He had an analytical mind. Uh, his background was in science. But, you know, we didn't have an opportunity back then to put him in a requirements course. So we had him work side by side with two of our more senior resources for about six months. I mean, he was literally next to them for six months, learning everything he could. Uh, we would give him productive tasks for the project. And then every step of the way, we're just, you know, rewarding him for what he did well, but then helping him reflect on what he didn't get right the first time so he could repeat the task in the future and get it right. Um, for another year or so after that, we let him own small pieces of projects. We would check in with him and certainly do the same kind of mentoring, but it was a little less hands-on. Um, so within about a year and a half, I would say he was running solo as a product manager. You know, at that point, he was actually a mentor to other junior resources in the organization.